hello my dear students i hope all of you are very well and you are learning my name is abhijit devnath i am working as an assistant professor at nit pharmacy institute greater noida so we are continuing our learning in pharmaceutical biotechnology i hope all of you have enjoyed my all the previous lectures where i am teaching you how uh, biotechnology has changed our entire healthcare system how our today's world is much more safer due to biotechnology and all of you i hope might have got a huge inspiration after listening my previous lecture on uh, insulin production by using rdna so we are actually learning the genetic engineering in unit 2 uh, this, this is the i uh, that is a on last lecture of unit 2 today i'm going to tell you something very interesting pcr polymerase chain reaction after listening this lecture your understanding on rt pcr pcr and how pcr can help you in your research and your studies this will be very much clear to you all so today i am going to tell you this following things first i will tell you what is uh, just a second at first i am going to tell you what is R, uh, pcr then what is the principle of pcr then what are the requirements of pcr instrumentation three aspects of pcr th things to try if your pcr does not work then example of pcr program advantages and application so very interesting things we are going to learn so let me first start with the pcr so pcr what is the full form polymerase chain reaction sometimes we also call it as a molecular photocopying photocopying follow this word photocopying let me highlight when we talk about photocopy you are thinking might be the photocopy machine hai na? yes you are thinking you are um, thinking correct in photocopy machine if you give one copy it will give you multiple copy whatever the number of copy you want similarly the pcr machine it will give you multiple copy of your dna for example here is your one dna and you have um, started your work with the pcr technique you will be getting two dna first then four then eight then 16 and at the end million whatever the number of dna you want huge amount of copy of dna it will be giving you so that's why it says uh, um, it's a mo molecular photocopying a fast and inexpensive technique used to amplify copy small segment of the dna yes small segment your entire dna or large segment will be not copied small segment okay should be very much clear this technique was actually developed by the carry mullis in 1980 Okay, there are other centers also are actually have uh, worked um, for this, but Kerry Mull is actually uh, got credit for um, his uh, success. The PCR actually based on using the ability of DNA polymerase to synthesize new strand of DNA complementary um, the offered template strand. Okay, I will tell you more how uh, this thing called DNA polymerase is actually playing a big role. You are giving one DNA, that is one template, here I am seeing the template strand. For example, this I am giving one template, uh, one template stand. From that, multiple copies will be created. You can see eight copies, and you can see how many copies are actually created. You can create infinite number of the uh, um, that is a uh, DNA. Actually, infinite. What is not completely correct? You can say million. Okay, because how? Why? Because DNA polymerase can add a nucleotide only unto pre-existing uh, three three OIS group. 3 prime OH group, uh, it needs a primer to which it can add to the first nucleotide. I will tell you more in my next slide about this all those things. So, I hope it is very much clear to you all by using this technique, if you have one copy, you can create multiple copies of your DNA. Let me tell me more, let me tell you more that uh, this requirement makes the it possible to, de to delineate a specific reason of a template sequence that is uh, that the researcher wants to amplify. See, uh, DNA sequencing is a very uh, cost um, costly work. Okay, it will take huge amount of money if you uh, start DNA sequencing. But for a certain disease, if you have a suspect that certain area of the gene is responsible for a disease, and you want to see the activity of certain area, whether this gene is responsible or not, in that case, particular segment of a DNA you can study particular a segment of a DNA you can study or particular region of template sequence. At the end of the PCR reaction, the specific sequence will be uh, accumulated by billions of copy. Okay. By using PCR, uh, minute amount of DNA can be replicated very rapidly 
producing enough DNA to easily detect, study and used in the variety of the application. PCR has become uh, essential tool in crime investigation also and in diagnosis the genetic diseases. I <laughs> will tell you more how you can use the in crime investigation, DNA fingerprinting, I know, all of you might have uh, listened such kind of things, uh, DNA test to uh, identify if a criminal is actually um, involved in some crime, you can identify by using this technique, if you need just need to the DNA sample of that uh, criminal and then you can do whatever the evidence you have collected, you can just start PCR and you may whatever the results will get, you may just match, if it is matching then he is the criminal, he is the culprit. Right now lots of cases has been solved by using because of the advancement of such technologies. Now PCR through ages, let me tell you a basic history, basic story. All of you are aware in 1953 the discovery of DNA double helix structure was done by Watson and Crick. After that in 1967 Thomas Brook he reports on uh, on the isolation of uh, extra um, that is a uh, extremorphic bacterium this thing called uh, thermophilus uh, equitus. After that in 19 uh, that is a uh, 71 uh, Klebs and his co-worker first described the method using an enzymatic assay to replicate a short DNA template into uh, DNA template with a primer in, in in vitro. Okay, so it was a just the beginning of the entire work. Then uh, tag polymerase in 1976, the tag polymerase actually isolated. It's a thermostable DNA uh, polymerase named after uh, thermophilic bacterium uh, that was a thermos equitus. Whatever they have discovered based on this uh, bacterium, uh, the name was actually given tag polymerase. After that, in 1977. Frederick Sanger and his colleague introduced uh, dideoxy chain termination method for sequencing the DNA also known as the Sanger sequence. I hope many of you might have listened this word Sanger sequence, it is very much uh, popular right now. It, it utilizes the DNA polymerase nucleotide precursor and one oligonucleotide primer. And after that in 1982 first cited um, use of the microarray technology that is a cloning and screening of sequence expressed in the uh, mouse uh, colon tumor. This is the journal Cancer Research Editor published. This is the first cited microarray technology, first uh, that is a research paper where they have uh, mentioned that yes, they have worked on this technology. And then in 1883, uh, the next year, this uh, that is a uh, Catus and Kerimulis, they discovered that by using uh, two oligonucleotide instead of one on opposite strand enables DNA to be synthesized from a single strand. Here is the beginning or here is the story actually starting of our uh, polymerase uh, chain reaction because you can see the name Kerimulis. At the beginning of my lecture I have mentioned that how is Kerimulis, he is the uh, um, that is a we can say not actually founding father, but he is the person who got the credit for polymerase chain reaction. And then in 1985. PCR technique described in an article. Here you can see in a research format, in a research paper format, this is actually uh, um, available for the public. So, can you imagine from 1953 to 1985, how much long time actually it was required to uh, ultimately uh, <laughs> getting the multiple copies of the DNA? Before that, before 1953, we are not aware, we, uh, we are actually not aware that yes. DNA is double standard, how they are actually joined, AIT, GC, etcetera, etcetera, these things are not, not so much clear. Somebody, um, Watson and Crick, they identified, they reported and then with all this advancement, with all this advancement you can see which has lead to development of the PCR technique. Then the story was actually not ended, in uh, eight, 1988 patent for tech DNA polymerase was filed by the Kerimulis and then in science magazine tech polymerase was the reported as the first molecule of the year Kerimulis. Then in uh, 1993 Kerimulis got the Nobel prize, after getting Nobel prize you can imagine how much uh, great uh, discovery those days it might have might be. Then uh, watch, uh, another thing I would like to mention you that the first high fidelity DNA polymerase actually characterized by Martin et al., okay, hot uh, start to PCR by UX. 
and then antibody based hot star technology was also described in 1994 then in 1995 first complete genome of a free living organism actually sequenced by Venter and his colleague okay by using the same technique then then in 1996 uh, genome of first eukaryotic organism was actually sequenced then in 2000 after long 4 years Lennox Therapeutics published a marker MPSS a paralyzed adapter ligation uh, mediated based uh, sequencing technology uh, launching the next generation sequence. I hope recently all of you have mentioned here NGS next generation sequencing. So, here is the beginning of NGS. Okay. Then also in the same year in uh, same year uh, already I have mentioned that uh, how the commercial RTPC actually was happened. Then in 2005 uh, fusion high fidelity DNA polymerase the first PCR uh, enzyme based um, that is a protein technology actually launched. Um, after that in 2007 the first complete human genome sequence was actually um, done and then in 2009 the MIOE guidelines that is minimum information for publication of qualitative polymer real time polymerase um, chain reaction experiment was actually published. And then in 2010, Gibson et al. created the first bacterial cell controlled by a chemically synthetic genome. So, whatever the things I have tried to share with you, whatever the development I have tried to share with you up to here, all the things was possible because of the advancement of one technology called PCR. And we have a great respect and we are so much uh, thankful to a great scientist called his name is Kerry Mooley, who got Nobel Prize. Yeah in 1993. Now, after telling you the story how PCR was actually got uh, developed and uh, from where it was actually started what we can do by using PCR. Now, let me tell you something more types what are the types of PCR there are huge types of PCR in 21st century <laughs> you have one DNA you have one DNA and you from that one DNA you can create multiple the passing of time it will increase. So, what are the types? These are the various types. I cannot, I should not uh, tell you about all these things, otherwise, you will be become, uh, you will be feeling so much boring or it will be so much difficult for you to remember all the things. But you should uh, remember uh, one kind of uh, PCR is called polymerase chain uh, RT PCR. The first transcript is here yeah, RT PCR. Let me just remove the inks this because RT-PCR recent times it got huge popularity because of its high accuracy in COVID-19 uh, the um, that means a uh, virus detection. Now, what is RT-PCR? In my previous slide or uh, here I have also mentioned sometimes we called as a reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction or sometimes we also called as a real time or quantitative polymerase chain reaction both the things are actually correct. Now, what we are actually doing in RT-PCR? what are the uh, steps and how RTPCR is giving much more accurate results compared to other to detect the COVID-19 uh, virus called SARS-CoV-2. Here is the answer. So, what will happen? All of you are uh, yeah, aware that if uh, transcription may happen, then DNA to RNA actually going to form. In reverse transcription, RNA to DNA will be actually forming. So, the enzyme that does uh, reverse transcription actually called as a reverse transcriptase. It is an enzyme that is why at the end it is written ASE is. So, this step actually required this step actually required for virus with RNA genome because SARS-CoV-2 it is a single strand RNA RNA genome. Okay. So, this step actually required with the RNA genome. So, the genome must be converted to DNA to work with the DNA polymerase in the PCR assay. PCR actually completely uh, based on the DNA. Okay, that is why you have to convert this thing this RNA into DNA. So, the first step we are actually uh, converting. So, uh, you can see this is the virus called SARS-CoV-2 SARS-CoV-2 this is SARS-CoV-2 we are actually extracting its viral DNA. Let me remove the inks you can see this is called spike protein this is the these things these things. This is actually its genomic material. 
okay, called RNA. Single strand RNA. So we are, we are actually extracting that viral RNA from that virus. Then what we are actually doing? We are actually doing reverse transcription. How we are actually doing? By using the reverse transcriptase. By using the reverse transcriptase, we are actually uh, doing reverse transcription. The viral RNA we are actually converting into DNA. See, this is the RNA, and then uh, we are actually making DNA template for PCR. Whatever the DNA will be, we are actually developing here. This um, DNA it will be uh, um, that is work as a template. In the next step, what we are actually doing? We are doing PCR. Okay. I hope it is very much clear to you all why we call it as a RT PCR. There are two basically two different steps. From here, uh, yeah, this step actually called as a RT because we are actually using reverse transcriptase um, polymerase enzyme. And the next step, your this thing called uh, here, yeah, these steps actually we are actually employing our technology called uh, yeah up to here, yeah up to here. We actually call it as a up to here. This part which we call as a polymerase chain reaction PCR and last part we are actually doing some analysis, we are doing some analysis I will tell you more. So, that is why RT and this part PCR, so together they are called as a RT PCR. I hope it is very much clear to you all, Any, if anybody may ask you what is RT PCR, I hope now, you, now you, all of you will be able to uh, give them the answer. Now, I was actually here, uh, so you have the DNA. DNA template. So, what we will do? We are going to do the PCR test, we are going to do the PCR activity. You are going to add some primer to the DNA. First, you are going to break the DNA, okay. you are going to break the DNA, you are going to uh, unwind, then you are going to add some primer. So, small primer sequences, uh, sequences have high um, that is a big impact because they are actually so specific. So, DNA is actually built off for those uh, primers and then multiply the copy of the DNA sequence. We have added the primer, whatever the sequence you have created, you are going to multiply that thing. There is a process I will tell you more in my upcoming slide how you can multiply. After the uh, multiplication, you are going to analyze. Finally, uh, that is a more fluorescence will be measured. So, whatever the things will be happening here in this uh, entire activity, there will be some fluorescence activity. You are going to analyze the fluorescence, how much light actually it is emitting, okay, the data, basically the data. If the virus is present, you will be getting such kind of, uh, just a second, if the virus is actually present, you will be getting such kind of peak, because here whatever the primer actually using, this primer can bind only uh, that is a um, such kind of DNA, which DNA uh, actually is supposed to be present in, in, in this kinds of uh, activity or, such, or which DNA might be coming from the RNA whatever actually present here. So, you will be getting such kind of uh, that is a peak if the, if the virus is present, if virus is not present. So, obviously, the primary will not bind with anybody, you will be getting some decline or very narrow uh, that is a uh, uh, that is a chart. Here is a picture. So, you can see. Uh, now, another thing I will tell you, uh, recently all of you might have heard that antigen antibody test. And, uh, all of you might have listened recently uh, heard that uh, apart from RT PCR, apart from RT PCR, there is another thing called uh, antigen antibody test. And many of the scientists, many of the government agencies, they are actually not recommending for antibody test. Why? The answer is actually lying here. You can see if a virus is actually present in your swab. So, what will happen? After some time this will grow in your lung, in your lung, then you will be observing some symptoms. In first day or in next few days you are going to uh, that is a get some symptoms. So, uh, at the beginning days, uh, at the beginning days uh, after the symptoms actually start, so at that time uh, your immune system will be start working. Okay. So, at that time if you check your uh, some swab and if you check uh, the presence of the virus, if you get if you get such kind of peak, obviously it is very much clear that virus is actually present. And if you do not, 
if you do not get succinyl peptide instead of you can get this in this case virus is actually not present. So, uh, what actually happen in RT PCR you are getting the results in the early time virus is entered at the early time actually getting, but in case of antibody test it will take so much time because your immune system will start working then your antibody will be generated in your blood then you are going to get some results. So, it will take so much time that is why antibody test will not give you the perfect results. Okay. Somebody got infected, okay. so 6 days has passed then in 6 to in this period your antibody test will give you the perfect results that is why we do not actually uh, that is a, a prefer. Now, what is the principle? Principle is very simple to amplify lot of uh, double standard DNA. Uh, that is fragment with same identical copies of the enzymatic method. So, what we are doing? We are actually doing three things denaturation, annihilation and extension of the double stranded DNA molecule. What are the things required? You require these things first the DNA sample that is the sample then you need some primer nucleotide then you need uh, PCR tube mix buffer and tag polymerase all the things will be uh, ultimately given to here this sequence this uh, instrument. So, how it will started in initial stage in initial step uh, denaturation will be happen here we are giving the temperature uh, that is 95 degree. So, whatever the DNA you can see it will be get separated you can see the separation has happened here after that primers are actually going to add with all those things here temperature actually we are actually reducing 55 degree centigrade uh, primers are actually added and then uh, we actually call it as an inhaling this process and then we are actually again increasing the temperature here DNA polymerase or uh, we can say uh, yeah uh, it will be actually going to ex extent okay. then DNA polymerase going to um, at the final step another your copy actually get generated you can see from 1 we have started let me we have started from 1 it was break it was actually broken into two part primers was added polymerase enzyme actually uh, helped to make its new another another stand and due to that you are getting another copy all the things are happening here. So, steps denaturation temperature are giving to uh, 90, uh, 92 to 94 degree centigrade double standard DNA actually broken into single stand then inhaling actually happening in this process we are actually reducing the temperature here reverse or uh, primer and forward primer both the things are actually coming joining and primers are bind to their complementary sequence extension process in this process we are actually increasing the temperature slightly in this poly in this activity the polymerase DNA polymerase bind to the and help primer and extend the uh, DNA like this it will continuously extend it will extend tag polymerase. So, if you see the uh, activity in, in your uh, graph you will be getting such kind of graph with passing of time you are increasing the temperature first you have increased the temperature for de de denaturation then you have reduced the temperature for inhaling then you have again increased the temperature. Okay, then again denaturation this cycle will be this cycle whatever you can see uh, it will be uh, go on and on it will be go on and on. Okay. So, you can go with the multiple cycle. So, ultimately uh, uh, your uh, product extension will be happen. So, if you have one copy you are getting multiple copies. So, what are the things you required you required magnesium chloride up to this uh, concentration buffer D and um, TPS primer then uh, you need some DNA polymerase then ultimately target DNA which DNA you, can, you are going to um, you are trying to photocopy you are trying to molecular uh, photocopying you are, you are trying to increase its number. So, uh, these are the things we actually required I already mentioned primer thermostable DNA polymerase DNA um, thermocycler yes DNA what is DNA thermocycler actually this machine. Uh, where it is yeah this machine it is called as a DNA thermal cycler this is a variety this is variety machine uh, which um, company uh, it is called as a DNA thermal cycler. Here you can see this is the entire instrumentation and there are three aspects specificity efficiency and fidelity these are the three aspects of the PCR and if things try if PCR, um, PCR does not work yeah, if many of the cases you will be observing you are failed in your activities. In those cases you have to check the DNA quality or reduce the inhaling temperature increasing the magnesium concentration or you have to add dimethyl uh, this thing called DMSO dimethyl uh, um, that is a uh, sulfoxide 
or you can also use different types of thermostabilizer enzyme or throughout the primer. If extra spurious product actually been present, in first case you can increase the annealing temperature or in second case you can reduce the magnesium concentration or in third case you can also uh, re re reduce the number of cycle. But in fourth scenario, you can try different enzyme. So, these are the things uh, many of the cases will be observing that it is not working. So, you can do this kinds of activity. So, here is an example of uh, PCR program. So, this is the temperature and timing for initial denaturation, then thermo uh, cycle file, then again denaturation, then inhalation extension and final extension. So, what are the advantages? A small amount of DNA actually required and results whatever you obtain, it is will be very quick and usually in one day and usually not necessary to uh, use the radioactive material and PCR is much more precise in determining the size of the allele and yes PCR can use for the detection of the uh, detect point mutation. If a single point mutation is happen that thing also can be identified. There are lots of limitation uh, PCR re in the reaction start with the generate uh, copies of target sequence exponentially. Only during the exponential phase of DNA uh, PCR reaction it possible to uh, give you the results and because of the inhibitor of uh, polymerase reaction is found in sample re reagents limitation sometimes may happen. So, these are the some few uh, limitations you can use this technology in all the various aspects like molecular archaeology, uh, in molecular identification, epidemiology, ecology, genotyping, drug discovery uh, everywhere actually using. Sequential also using in bioinformatics genome cloning and also we are doing site directed mutagenesis also. So, in conclusion it is not a vital in clinical laboratory by amplifying amount in uh, DNA for HD detection, but it also important for genetic predisposing for defect uh, such as factor 5 Latin. So, it is employed the low enforcement and also testing animals uh, stocks or vegetable hybrid in many of the areas. So, today we have seen what is PCR its principal requirement then we have seen three aspects what are the things you should do examples advantages applications. So, thank you all of you for joining today's lecture I hope all of you got huge knowledge through this lecture uh, I have ended my lecture so early because I have a shortage of time. So, I hope this unit unit 2 of pharmaceutical biotechnology helped you a lot to um, boost up your knowledge in part of this field. Thank you all of you we may meet in a new unit God bless you all keep learning keep shining thank you.